catch invisible ghosts under 2,400 meter thick rock layers. China's first extremely deep underground laboratory is located in the belly of Jinpingshan in Liangshan, Sichuan. It only takes more than 20 minutes to drive here from the entrance on one side of the tunnel, but it is completely different from the outside world. The radiation underground is extremely low, hundreds of millions of times lower than that on the surface. And in a low radiation, clean environment, we can explore the ultimate questions about the universe, humans and the world, how does the universe evolve? Where do humans come from? Let's take a closer look in this video. In Liangshan, Sichuan, China, the Yalong River rushes down from the Qinghai Tibet Plateau and hits the Jinping Mountain, which is two peaks in a row like a screen. The imposing river water was bent into a 150-kilometer river bay. The river valley is deep and the natural drop is more than 300 meters, which is the best condition for hydropower generation. Jinping Level 1 and Level 2 hydropower stations are located on both sides of Jinping Mountain, facing each other across the mountain. In between, two parallel ultra-long traffic tunnels pass through the deep belly of the mountain. Engineers call them A and B tunnels. It is reported that the maximum buried depth of the tunnel is 2,375 meters, and the tunnel section with a buried depth greater than 1,500 meters accounts for 73.1% of the total length of the tunnel. Physicists have long discovered that in the universe, the matter known to humans only accounts for about 4.9% of the mass of the universe. On the vaster and boundless canvas of the universe, there is another type of mysterious matter that accounts for about 26.8%. They do not emit light, nor do they participate in electromagnetic interactions and are difficult to be seen by us so they are called dark matter. In order to detect dark matter, humans have worked for more than 100 years, but there has been no result so far. Physicists have not given up. They put the detector in a quiet corner underground. There is a target in the detector. If the target material collides with the dark matter, it will obtain a very small amount of energy from it and then convert it into electrical, light, heat and other signals that humans can recognize. Although the principle is simple, the experiment is very difficult because dark matter is like a ghost and the probability of colliding with ordinary matter is extremely low. Even if a large detector waits for a whole day, it may not encounter a collision. In contrast, the large amount of rays entering the Earth from the universe and the radioactive nuclides in the surrounding radiation can collide with the target material hundreds of millions of times a day on average. Scientists are not unable to see the signal, but they see too many signals. It is like looking for a needle in a haystack to find a very small dark matter signal in a huge amount of interference signals. It is difficult to clean up cosmic rays on the ground. Therefore, it is best to build a laboratory very deep underground. There, the thick rock layer has a blocking effect on cosmic rays. The deeper the laboratory is located, the fewer cosmic rays there are. There are only two options for underground laboratories in the world, mines or tunnels. Before Jinping, China did not have its own deep underground laboratory, and Tsinghua University's early dark matter experiments could only be carried out in a few square meters of space in a Korean laboratory. Limited by the experimental site, Chinese scientists can only participate in other people's basic research and cannot become leaders. Previously, internationally famous underground laboratories such as Italy's LNGS, France's Modane and the United States' Dussel were all between 1,100 and 1,700 meters deep, 
and the deepest Canadian SNO underground laboratory was only 2,100 meters. On May 8, 2009, Tsinghua University and the state investment Yalong River Company, then known as Erton Company, signed a strategic cooperation agreement. The two parties decided to jointly build China's first ultra-deep underground laboratory in Jinping Mountain Tunnel. The site selection utilized a small experimental hole for rock mechanics experiments during construction, and on this basis, about 4,000 cubic meters of space were excavated. By the end of 2010, the first phase of the laboratory was put into use, and China's independent dark matter detection experiment was also built from scratch. In August 2014, Tsinghua University and SDIC Yalong River Engineering Company signed a co-construction agreement again. Both parties agreed to raise funds on their own to expand the second phase of the experimental cave. Later test results showed that the amount of cosmic rays received by Jinping Underground Laboratory was the lowest in the world, only one hundred millionth of that on the surface. It is more than 100 times smaller than the LNGS Underground Laboratory in Italy, and thousands of times smaller than the Y2L Underground Laboratory in South Korea. In December 2023, the second phase of China Jinping Underground Laboratory was officially put into scientific operation. Since the completion of the first phase of China Jinping Underground Laboratory, the laboratory has continuously produced results in the field of cutting-edge basic research and has published more than 120 high-level papers, including two published in Nature magazine and 23 published in Physical Review Letters. Drive into the A-Line tunnel from one side of the tunnel, drive to about 9 kilometers and then turn south. Turn into a steep auxiliary tunnel and you can go to the four newly dug experimental halls in the second phase. Compared with the first phase, the laboratory space of the second phase has expanded by nearly 80 times, with a usable space of more than 300,000 cubic meters. Compared with the traffic tunnel with the original appearance of exposed rocks, this is a completely different world. Entering the second phase laboratory hall, you can see warm and bright beige, smooth, delicate, tightly and fittingly wrapped around the cave walls and with the ups and downs of the original rock formations. In order to avoid psychological depression for people who work underground for a long time, Tsinghua University specially asked teachers from the Academy of Fine Arts to do visual design and make the laboratory environment warm. But the coating is not just for decoration, it is the biggest challenge in the construction of the second phase. Its surface must be smooth and clean without dust, because there are also radioactive nuclides in the dust, which will pollute the experimental environment. The radiation that already exists in the human living environment is also called background radiation. Physicists have found that after the cosmic rays, the number one enemy of dark matter detection are eliminated, the enemies around us become the key to influencing the experimental results. Radon gas is an inert radioactive gas derived from the decay of the radioactive nuclide radium-226. It will continue to escape from rocks, soil, and water seeping from mountain cracks. Radioactive nuclides in building materials will also decay into radon gas. These colorless and odorless pollution sources not only affect the operation of the experiment, but also cause harm to the human body if the concentration is too high. Therefore, in order to minimize environmental radiation, the primary task of the second phase builders is to waterproof and suppress radon. According to reports, the beige protective suit on the wall of the laboratory is only 10 centimeters thick, but it consists of 10 layers of structure. 
It uses a lot of unconventional materials and process innovations with controlled radioactivity. The Chinese have overcome a series of technical difficulties and the integrated waterproof and radon suppression solution is the world's first with a 99% suppression rate for the release of radon gas from mountain surrounding rocks. But after building a clean a house, the process of reducing the background is still not complete. Materials in the environment contain radioactive nuclides, which can emit radiation such as photons and neutrons and also need to be shielded. To this end, the experimenters also need to build a shield outside the detector. The detector of the CDEX experimental group has been upgraded to the third generation, and the shielding material is also constantly updated. In the third generation, the experimental group directly immersed the detector in the center of a huge 1,725 cubic meter liquid nitrogen tank. Liquid nitrogen is very pure and much cleaner than copper and lead, but because of its low density, in order to achieve the same shielding effect, the liquid nitrogen tank must be made large enough, which is also the reason why the upgraded experiment requires a larger space and can only be carried out in the second phase laboratory. So far, people don't know what kind of particles dark matter is. The most mainstream candidate is a weakly interacting massive particle, WIMP, which only interacts weakly with other ordinary matter through weak interaction and gravity. According to theoretical models, its mass may be between 1 billion electron volts, GeV, and 1 trillion electron volts, TeV. Since the number of WIMP particles calculated by theory just coincides with the dark matter density, Obtained from cosmological observations, scientists feel that this cannot be just a coincidence. Therefore, since the 1970s and 1980s, WIMP has been considered one of the most promising theories, and people call it the WIMP miracle. Therefore, the direct detection experiment of dark matter basically takes the WIMP theory as the starting point to scan the energy region where the theory predicts the dark matter. Taking the Panda X experimental group as an example, it is reported that the dark matter mass range scanned by its detector is 5 GeV 10 TeV, spanning at least three orders of magnitude. At present, although experimental groups around the world have not found dark matter, as the range of accurate scanning becomes larger and larger, at least a large part of the possible areas have been ruled out. From the initial CDEX-1 and CDEX-10 to the CDEX-300 under construction, the mass of high-purity germanium in the three generations of detectors has increased from 1 kg and 10 kg to 300 kg. On the other hand, from Panda XI, Panda X2 to Panda X4T, the liquid xenon used in the three generations of detectors has increased from 120 kg and 500 kg to 4 tons respectively. In the future, the detectors of both teams will move to a larger scale, but when they reach a certain scale and still have not found dark matter, and the funds required have reached tens of billions or even hundreds of billions of yuan, they will face the same dilemma. Facing a very uncertain future, how should scientists choose? This is a choice that all cutting-edge research must face. In fact, because dark matter has not been found, the WIMP theory has encountered many doubts internationally in recent years. People are wondering if dark matter is lighter or heavier than WIMP particles. Another possible ending to the story is that once dark matter is discovered, it will completely change human cognition of the world and completely open an unknown window in the universe. Among all the ultimate questions that humans want to study, there is only one ultimate question, where do we come from? Jinping Underground Laboratory is not only for dark matter research. 
What is nuclear astrophysics studying? When the universe was first born, there were only hydrogen and helium, but 13.8 billion years later, more elements appeared, such as carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. These elements constitute the Earth, matter, and humans. Chinese scientists say that if the universe is a big pot in which various substances are constantly cooked, today's world is the result of cooking. Nuclear astrophysics is to simulate this big pot on the Earth and build a mini-universe. Juna is an attempt. Further explanation is that whether it is the original Big Bang or the evolution of stars, it is a particularly violent process, and the driving force behind it is the nuclear reaction. The idea of Juna simulating the universe is to use the Deep Earth Accelerator with the largest beam intensity in the world, which is independently developed to use one atomic nucleus to hit another atomic nucleus, and then generate a new atomic nucleus to measure the different elements produced by the reaction in this process. Like dark matter signals, the reaction signals of different elements are also very weak. So in order to eliminate the interference of cosmic rays, the accelerator is also placed in the Jinping Underground Laboratory, which is looking up at the stars from the depths of the mountains. In addition to deep earth physics, deep earth medical research is also being carried out in the Jinping Laboratory. Studies have long shown that the risk of tumors increases with increased radiation. So, will tumors change differently under extremely low radiation stimulation? In 2022, similar experiments were conducted in the Jinping Underground Laboratory. After one month of cultivation, tumor cells showed phenomena such as slowed proliferation, weakened migration ability, and cell cycle arrest. Experts explained that the experimental results of Jinping showed that in an extremely low background radiation environment, the growth and metastasis ability of tumor cells are declining, which is good news for tumor treatment. The Jinping Underground Laboratory is positioned as a comprehensive major basic scientific research platform and an open and shared large scientific facility with deep frontier scientific exploration as the main direction, covering particle physics, nuclear astrophysics, cosmology, deep earth medicine, rock mechanics, and other research fields. Next, China plans to use Jinping Underground Laboratory as a platform to propose the Jinping Deep Underground Neutrino and Dark Matter Research international big science plan and launch several major international cooperation projects. Jinping Underground Laboratory is a microcosm of the current reform and innovation of China's science and technology system and mechanism. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.